So The King was one of the most popular movies in Korean cinema in 2017 thus far. It came out on January 18th, and in its opening week here in Korea, it had about 1.85 million viewers watch the movie. This movie captivated Korea with its political power-hungry story, and it gets a lot of comparisons to Martin Corsese's Goodfellas, as well as The Wolf of Wall Street. In fact, this movie is dubbed by many people The Korean Wolf of Wall Street. So, does Korea's version of The Wolf of Wall Street hold up? Let's find out. So the movie starts off like this. A young boy named Taesu lives in the countryside city of Mokpo, which is in the southern area of South Korea. As a child, he had a rough upbringing. For one, his dad's actually a criminal. He actually steals things and takes the stolen items and sells it for a lot more. And as you guys can predict, this soon catches up to his father as he is soon arrested. He witnesses this one key thing that will dictate his rest of his childhood as well into adulthood. That power is key. Power is number one. As he sees this attorney lock up his dad, he wants to be an attorney himself and change the world through law and power. But to become an attorney, he first has to get his grades up. And well, his grades are pretty bad. In fact, they suck. And he's in high school as well. People don't expect much from him. He's lazy. But due to a special study technique he has, he soon improves his grades and becomes a lawyer. But soon when he becomes a prosecutor, he is challenged with one of the most difficult dilemmas in his life. In this one situation, whichever decision he picks from this situation will actually improve his career while either appear or stay down here. So from this case, he has a big decision to make, one that deals with ethics, morals, and of course, power. And thus starts the movie The King. Now, as I alluded to earlier, this movie deals a lot about power. And with power comes corruption, money, girls, parties, getting drunk, powerful bosses, gangs, politics, and loyalty. Pretty much everything The Wolf of Wall Street had. By watching this movie, you'll actually get to learn a lot about Korean history. As you'll see, this movie is really tied to the Korean democratic movements in the 80s and 90s, as well as the Korean presidential elections. So you'll see how gripping and pivotal these presidential elections are to these attorneys. Now, if you guys had your fair share in the Korean cinema, this movie has a lot of who's who in this film. So there's a lot of star power in this movie, as well as side actors that have been in other previous hit movies. So there's four main characters in this movie. First is the main actor in the movie, Jo in sung who plays Park Tae-soo, the main character in the movie. I felt he did a good job in conveying the emotions and what it's like to be an attorney, but at the same time being pulled by power and corruption and money and greed and all these other things that come from being a powerful person. And as with Leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street, you know your lead star has to have a powerful performance, has to do really well. And I wouldn't say that Jo In Sung had the crazy performance that Leonardo DiCaprio had. I'll say he does a pretty good job. Next is veteran actor Jung Woo Sung, who plays Chief Han, or pretty much tae boss in the movie. And I would actually say he probably does the best job in the movie, person you don't want to mess with, and if you mess with them, you will be dealt with. This is how dangerous this guy is, how conniving this guy is, and just how influential and charismatic that Jung Woo Sung puts in this character. Next is the actor Bae Sung Woo, who actually plays Chief Han's assistant, and he does an admirable job of playing the assistant to Chief Han, Yang Dong Chul. And you can see throughout the movie, he's giving valuable advice to Tae Soo, and I really liked how, as a side role, he made that assistant role powerful. And the last main character in this movie is played by actor Ryu Jun Yeol, and he plays Tae Soo's childhood friend, Choi Du Il. And like main character Jo In Sung, he actually plays a good admirable part in his role as well as the childhood friend of being the loyalist, of like sticking through like hard times, of both being from the countryside when they move to Seoul, like having that loyalty together. Another thing to note about this movie is like the movie's length is about 2 hours and 15, 2 hours and 20 minutes, which is really long, but I really liked how the flow of this movie was paced. In all actuality, it doesn't really feel like it's a 2 hour and 20 minute movie. It's actually quite fast and there's not much filler in the movie. The cutscenes and transitions show the story and where it's at at any given time, which is appreciated because they actually cover to a large span of time, so it would be easy to get confused without those like smooth transitions and cuts. But the movie that does it so deftly, like you don't really get lost in the movie. So there's actually a lot of characters in this movie, but with two hours and 20 minutes, it actually feels short. It actually feels like, how are you gonna fit all these characters in the movie and get their you know, fair share of spotlight? The main four characters, as well as the other side characters that play a role in Taesu's story. Now I mentioned earlier in the beginning of this video that this movie gets compared to The Wolf of Wall Street a lot. And it's pretty much apparent from watching the beginning of this movie. As I said earlier, there's a lot of partying, a lot of booze, a lot of girls, a lot of money, cursing, and whatnot. But I'll say this, this movie's kind of like a mild version of The Wolf of Wall Street, and it's not a bad thing necessarily. And it's pretty much Korea's twist on the political drama genre. Now, another thing is the special effects, which you'll actually see in the first five minutes of the movie. I really like the special effects in this movie when they use them. They use them sparingly, but when they did, they did it really well. Now let's talk about the good and the bad of this movie. First, the good. What I really liked about the movie is the theme. I really like the political drama theme. I like how I mentioned earlier that it's a two hour and 20 
minute movie, but doesn't really feel that way. Like it's really paced really well. The transitions make the movie experience good. You rarely get lost in what's going on. And as a person that likes history, I really appreciated all the references to like the Korean presidential election. I really like that this movie really makes you appreciate Korean democracy today, as well as about learning Korean modern history. As for the acting in this movie, it's pretty good overall. I won't say that it's stellar or like mind blowing the way that the Wolf of Wall Street is. And, and I know some of you guys might be like thinking, you compare this movie a lot to the Wolf of Wall Street, but it can't be helped. I feel like this movie got a lot of influence from the Wolf of Wall Street and thus the comparisons have to be made. But I'll say this, if your movie is actually being compared to the Wolf of Wall Street in you know, some of the things that it did quite well, that's a compliment. I also like the environment and locations of the movie. They got the feel right, they got the atmosphere right, you know, to the small dinky attorney rooms that these people work in, to the nightlife and parties, to even going outside to the streets of Seoul, and even to the countryside later in the movie. The movie has the environment and atmosphere down. And now with the bad, I felt with the first 60% of the film, it was well done, it made sense, it was flowed well, but then maybe like the final 30, 40%, the wheels kind of fell off. I felt the plot was a little convoluted, they were getting a little too complicated for its own good, and I'm trying to say this without spoiling the plot. Also, I felt there were some characters that were underused. If they had a bigger role in this movie, that it would have been a lot stronger of a movie, especially towards the end. And one of the characters, this female prosecutor, I really wish they gave her a bigger, more powerful role because she actually acted quite well and she played such a pivotal role, but she didn't really get much limelight. And I felt a couple other characters in this movie like didn't get enough limelight or they were just kind of there to advance the plot. Kind of had to fill in the holes later. And when you see these characters, you not only feel, oh, where did they come from? Or why are they so underdeveloped? But they're also stereotypical as well. I felt like the ending wasn't bad, but could have also been a lot better. I felt it could have had more mm, but I felt there was a lot of missed opportunity to make it have more impact. I would actually say this movie starts off strong and it had really good ideas, but the execution in the second half of the movie was missing. Hopefully if you guys watch this movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. So what's the final verdict of this movie? So watch this movie if you're a big fan of the crime political genre, or if you wanna learn more about like Korean history, this movie can teach you a little bit about modern Korean history as well. As well as if you wanna see like the Korean version of the Wolf of Wall Street. It generally does a good job of showing a young attorney rising to power. With that all being said, I would not rate this a great movie. I would not rate this as like one of the pinnacles of Korean cinema, which is, you know, fine because you, not every Korean movie will be that way, but I felt this movie could have been a lot more. I felt that this movie missed a lot of potential. Like if, if it actually lived up to that potential and actually executed on some missing points, it would have been a really good movie. So what do you guys think about our movie review of The King? Have you guys seen the movie? Do you guys want to see the movie? Please leave your comments in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you guys want to learn more about Asian movies, I suggest you sign up for our email list and download our free ebook, The 108 Asian Movies to Watch below. And with that being said, I'm off to watch some more Asian movies, but I'll be back soon. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.